Hello, hello, check, check. Am I live? The YouTubes says I am not live. But I know I must be. Nope. Hello, McFly. Oh, don't want to stream 60 frames per second. Crikey. Frame rate. Oh, I can't change it. Damn it. And... No. Claims I'm not live. Don't believe it. EV blog 2. There I am. Ha. Mute myself. Hey, Joel. Hey, Mads. <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, Wilco. Hey, Anthony. Life. Thank you very much. Middle of Russia. Cool. Good day, Dimmer. I am. Oh, that looks laggy. Yep. Don't know what's going on. Anyway, I'm just building some shelving. So I thought I'd just turn it on live. I've got. Oh, remind me in 20 minutes to bugger off. <laughs> I've got like 20 minutes to do this. So I thought I'd go live. I've got my wireless headset mic. I assume everyone can hear me. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. <clears throat> live in the nether regions. In Melbourne. That must loud and clear. Thank you very much. All right. One screwdriver. Uh, hang on. One bag of bits. Just moved some shelving over from the rented lab into back home. So I thought I'd just whack it together because I want to get something achieved today. That'd be nice. So, uh, yeah, all right. So, sorry, it's not the best wide angle camera. It's just a C920 webcam. I had these when I, I had these topple over in the previous lab and they were, they were toppling over like this and I, like, I couldn't stop them. I couldn't get to them because I was like way away. And it, um, and it, I thought, oh no, it's going to like put this huge scratch on and take a gouge out of the wall because I've got to return the, um, you know, lab to a pristine condition. And, uh, <laughs> because it's rented when I actually leave it, it's called make good claws in the contract. And, uh, yeah, it, um, <laughs> it, uh, missed. It missed everything. So it actually happened twice because I'm too stupid to learn from my first mistake. So yeah, that was fun. All right. Let me like that in there. There you go. That's pretty stable. Now I don't know what the width is. Don't know what the width is. And for those who ask, because I know everyone will ask, so I'll say it now, this is the Broder system from Ikea. Broder, which you can't get anymore. Sorry, I'm not reading comments at all. Dun, dun, dun. Made in China, bloody hell. Of course it is. Broder. Broder, Ikea, Broder. There it is. There it is. That's the shelving. For those playing along at home, you can't get it anymore. I, am, I have been reliably informed. But, because uh, everyone asks where I get my shelving from. And yep, bought all this from Ikea way back. This was like, oh, not, not quite 10 years ago. When did I get this lab? It's coming close to 10 years, actually. It's pretty close. I think December or something. I think I got it just before Christmas or something like that. I think it's 10 years ago. Uh, right. So. Oh, nope. Nope. I'm a dumbass. 
no, these shelves aren't going in today because I forgot to bring, <laughs> forgot to bring the shelving brackets. Oh, forgot to bring the shelving brackets. Gone. So there's no point. I can't I can't put the shelves up. I can't um, even put the frames together because I don't know the exact width because um, you've got a high CPU usage detected. Yeah, yeah. It's because I'm doing 60 frames per second. I'm streaming in 60 frames per second when I shouldn't be. It was set to where I was recording the other day on that teardown with the Tagano because the Tagano is 60 frames per second. So there you go. So yeah, the light in here is shit. Really going to have to improve that. And uh, my girlfriend likes when you say hi. Hi, Andy's girlfriend. <clears throat> when did the stream start? Uh, about five minutes ago. Something like that. You can see it. No, two minutes ago. Wow, it's only two minutes. All right, well, I guess I might as well just do a Q&A for the rest of, until i got to go home, another 10, 15 minutes. I usually go home about 7-ish, something like that, if I've got stuff to do. <clears throat> what time in Australia? It's seven, almost 7pm 7 here. No, I don't have Dave 2 in my lab anymore. David doesn't like being called Dave. David, no, he uh, left. He's um, started his own uh, uh, contract design business. So he wanted to give that a go. You like cake, Dave. No, it's not going to be a build. It was a build. <laughs> and then I realized, like, I, I just, like, I didn't set this up. I just thought, oh, look, I'm going to assemble these shelves. Because uh, I was going to do it before I bug it off home. I reckon it would have taken like 20, 30, you know, 20 odd minutes to assemble these shelves. And I thought, oh, bugger it. I'll just uh, go live. And what do you know? Anyway. <clears throat> no, no, I'll answer questions for the next uh, 15 minutes or so before I bugger off home. Yes, I'm still in contact with David too. Oh, you want to mail him something? Oh, yeah, he's a he's pretty secretive dude. I don't think he's going to want to give out his address. You can send it into my, my mailbag and send it attention to David too. And... Uh, I will forward it on to him. <laughs> What's my day job? <laughs> this shit is my day job. It's been my day job for a decade. I'm, I'm now rounding it up to a decade. I'm rounding up to a decade because... Um, oh, this, this camera angle sucks, sorry. I'm rounding it up to a decade now because it's pretty darn close to a decade. It's a decade next April. Full time, uh, my full time at this next April will be 10 years, I believe. I think unless I've got a year wrong or something. Um, my world is doing good. No problems in my world. A lot of other people's worlds suck at the moment, but no. Nah. No, nah, um, David's 3D printer build, he didn't ever do anything with it. Um, yeah, last, <laughs> last I heard. No, no, it was, it was his, um, thes it was his uh, thesis project for uni and you know he thought as he does he over engineers everything and he uh, he thought you know because he thought he would i think he was he's done a video on it i think he mentions it in there i think yeah he thought about potentially selling it or you know doing you know actually so he so he did it really properly he didn't just cobble it together to get his thesis project done he he actually really engineered it well um but no i don't think he ever did anything with it could I make videos on programming FPGAs? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe, but I'm not the best. I haven't done FPGA stuff for a decade. And I'm not. I'm so, my VHDL would be so rusty. I never got into Verilog. My VHDL is so rusty. I'd 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 be starting from scratch again. Seriously, I haven't done VHDL for a long time. <laughs> so yeah, I I would not be the best person. That that'd take a bit of effort to get back up to speed again to do videos on that. Who was the first full-time YouTuber? Well, in our world, um, the engineering world, um, science world, I was, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I was the first to go full-time in April 2011. I became a full-time YouTuber in April 2011. So, 
If anyone knows of anyone else who was actually truly doing it as a full-time job and had nothing else, then let me know. Well, uh, technically, I was doing, still doing some contract work, but, you know, that was just a part-time thing. But, no, I was, yeah, no, that was my full-time job. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, I was doing midnight engineering as well with uh, some contract work. But that didn't last long. That lasted like six months before I um, didn't take on... I finished that contract and I didn't take in, on any more contract work. Make more product reviews? Yeah, i got another product review coming. Just got an LCR meter today. Um, so, yep, I'll be doing that. I've got a new multimeter coming out. I've got a new high current probe. Uh, uh, current probe? High current probe. Yeah, it's high current probe. A... Uh, oscilloscope current probe that's on my store you can buy it on my store um so i want to do a review of that yeah kip k doesn't count kip k doesn't count in our world nah yeah no i i wouldn't i wouldn't you know <laughs> i don't think kip k's ever been mentioned in the same or vice versa me in the same world as kip k or us engineering youtube is in the same world as kip k why the move back to the old lab? I've mentioned it in a video extensively, one or two exclusive videos on my supporters. You know, if you're a patron, you've seen it, or just go over to library. Go over to library.tv, go to my channel over there and search for it. probably has exclusive in the title or something. And I go through all the reasons why I'm moving back and stuff. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> ben down in the bunker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Bruce at XJet. I want to get him on the amp hour. He's a mate of mine. I want to get him on the amp hour one time. Yep. Did he ever finish his book, Rocket Man? I want to read his book. I wonder what ever happened to that. Yes, it's my... I guess something's my fault. Is it my fault that there's all these full-time YouTubers now? Well, in the engineering space. There's not many in the engineering space. There's, like, um, Medi from... Electro Boom, um, he's he, he does it full time. Uh, Great Scott does it full time. Um, I think Great Scott might even have someone else working for him. Does he? I'm not sure. I don't follow. I don't really follow his videos much. I just watch the occasional one. I don't follow the ins and outs of. Uh, I don't think. Who else? I don't think. Oh well, a few might be trying to cobble together a living doing it full time. But that, as far as I'm aware, we're probably the only three doing it like solidly full-time. Um, old lab, same dumpster. Yep. We've got to define full-time full first then. Yeah, it's what you do, you know, you, you don't have another job. Like, I, I reckon if you're doing other work on the side, you're probably not... Well, it depends on what you... Like, as I said, I was doing full-time, I was doing the YouTube... During, although we had a new kid then, so I was basically take care of another kid. You know, I was doing uh, new new daddy stuff um, during and the video and the blog during the day. But basically, yeah, it was paying my bills. If it's if it's your majority income, I guess you would define it that way. I'd say if YouTube is your majority income, then although my majority income does not come from the YouTube ads from actually producing the content, it comes from all the side stuff. You know, it comes from uh, the um, selling the products and advertising on the forum and website and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. I don't know if Big Clive's... A, no, no, no. I think Big Clive has a day job. Um, oh, sorry. AVE, of course. AVE is doing it. He's a full-time... He earns a sh metric shit ton from his patrons. He He hides all his income now. But last I calculated it, when when he was publishing uh, figures, when he was when his public figures were public, even back then, that was a couple of years ago. He's been hiding it for a couple of years now, I think. All his numbers, like his number of patrons and stuff like that. Um, but back then, he had ten thousand plus patrons. Back then, so run the numbers, calculate that at two to five bucks average per backer. You know, yeah, he's cleaning it up. Um, but all his eggs are in that Patreon basket. So I think he still does work on the side. But uh, just, you know, because that gives him a lot of content and stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know about Big Clive. I, I think Big Clive. Um, yeah, I know. I, I think he's got a day job, doesn't he? Do like, um, you know, uh, live lighting install, like lighting stuff or something, like concert venue stuff or something like that. I think something along those lines. <clears throat> oh, he's a Sparky, is he? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think AVA, uh, AVE does not need the other job for money. <laughs> um, I think he's doing really well from his patrons. Um, so he could, he shouldn't, but I think he's doing it because he likes it and he gets content, I guess, and stuff. And it keeps his hand in, you know, things like that. That's one of the things I miss that I don't have a full time job anymore is that I don't keep my hand in. I'm not designing stuff every day. Ah, uh, too long to talk about the lab power supply build. <clears throat> no, I don't know. Deuce ex. Silicium, a French YouTuber, no. <clears throat> yeah, it's side revenue. Linus, most of his revenue comes from float play now. Really? Comes from float doesn't come from the advertisers, because these things are chock full of ads. He'd be getting ten grand per video plus more because it's it's mainstream market. He'd be getting ten, twenty grand sponsor spots per video i mean just in my little niche i turn i've turned down five grand per video for a sponsor spot right because i i never want to do sponsorship i deliver i turn down every single sponsorship offer and some of them been of upwards of five thousand dollars right for one you know this video is sponsored by you know keysight or it's sponsored by whoever it's bloody well sponsored by widget inc and uh yeah <clears throat> Colin Furs, oh yeah, he's full time, but he's that little, you know, he's not in our space. There's tons. As I said, I've done a video on this. There are a hundred. Last I looked, it's probably over two hundred thousand now. So I'll say there's two hundred thousand channels out there. Two hundred thousand channels. Think of that number that have more than a hundred thousand subscribers that have that YouTube silver award. Once you start hitting a th hundred thousand subscribers, you start thinking, Ooh, can I do this full time? You know? And there's like, I think there's like, tw um, like, what was it? 20,000 channels or something that have a million subs, right? If you've got a million subs, you're doing this full time. Um, probably, yeah, it depends on your lifestyle, but you know, basically if I had a million subs, like I could survive if I just had the YouTube income, everything else vanished, just had the YouTube income. Um, and I don't get a huge number of views per subscriber because I make general interest content. So, um, yeah, un unlike a lot of more specialized channels or more general interest channels, um, so yeah, it's so it's not high, but I could still I I, I wouldn't starve <laughs> like, but we'd be in trouble if I just had my wife would make me go out and get a, a job, right? If I was only earning the YouTube income, right? So, president, if I was president, I'd want to be a dictator. It's the only way to get stuff done. It's you know, otherwise you just like what the hell can a president do? You know. <laughs> You can't do much. <laughs> you can veto bills and you can, I don't know, tweet and you can, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't do much. You can write executive orders. I assume you mean US president, not Australian president. And Dick Smith famously said when, when we were talking about um, having a republic here, you know, we were getting away from the monarchy, breaking off uh, from the Commonwealth, and we, we actually had a referendum here in Australia. We voted on it. And everyone voted, I can't remember the percentage, but we voted fairly solidly, like 70% maybe, to actually remain in the Commonwealth. Um, so we did actually have a national vote on this. And if we, I guess, I don't know what the uh, what would have happened if everyone voted, yeah, let's go to Republic. Would the politicians have actually gone through with it? I don't know. Because the government at the time, um, was it under John Howard? I don't know, very pro, I uh, don't know, was it under Abbott? Might have been under Tony Abbott. Yeah, very pro uh, pro Queen. So, yeah, we actually had a vote on that. Anyway, um, Dick Smith at the time, his name was like bandied about as, oh, one of the favorite people's people who they'd love to see as president, you know, Dick Smith, <laughs> right? And, uh, and he, he famously said, no, the only way I'd do it is as a dictator. <laughs> because, it, like, you know, otherwise you're just, eh, just a politician. Yep. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I don't believe. Yeah, and most of his income is from float plane. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying it. I mean, oh, but yeah, his overheads must be enormous. But how many subscribers would he have on float plane? I don't know. How much does float plane cost? I don't, I've got no idea. No idea. I don't really follow his channel that much. Watch the occasional video, but. <clears throat> 14k mads yeah yep well i was 14k once i was <laughs> i was 50 subscribers once i think i gained like 50 in a day <laughs> when i first published and i thought that was huge man that was like and i thought if i ever get to a thousand subs oh man this is serious shit i can't believe i got a thousand people want to watch me you <laughs> know that was incredible yep back then when you only had a 10 minute time limit and nobody, nobody did it. When I started in 2009, I think maybe there was one or two people in the world that were eking a living doing it full time somehow. Cause like you had to be invited to get monetization. You had to work for years to invite it. Like it just started this monetization thing. It just started. I don't think it had been out long and there were maybe one or two like was, um, um, oh God, I can't remember the early names anyway. Yeah, it was basically nobody went into YouTube thinking that they'd make any money from it. It just wasn't a thing. It just didn't even cross your mind. It wasn't even a thought. So, yeah. 200,000 channels and maybe only 100 of them worth watching. <laughs> yeah. G'day, off-grid Aussie prepper. Hey, <laughs> home of the I'm a victim premier. <laughs> nice. I don't, I've given, I've, I stopped following local politics. I just, fuck, it's just, no, nah, it's a shit show. As politics is in every country. Sorry, I haven't been scrolling. <clears throat> yep, I'm moving labs. Kits aren't popular anymore. Ah, oh, well, what the, what's the time, by the way? Oh, shit. I got 10 minutes tops. Um, so I'll finish the questions. Uh, kits, because, well, uh, kids don't want to play with kits anymore. You know, they don't want to build stuff. They want instant gratification. They want to, at the, you know, at best, they'll want to run their Raspberry Pi and, you know, make farting sounds with their Raspberry Pi. So, yeah. Thank you, uh, Jim. Yes, I thought the Lewis Rossman interview went excellently. That was great. Yeah, I, it was one of, it was a popular episode. I thought it went great too. I Because I knew Lewis is a good guest. Although he started out, um, like, because Lewis is not used to being interviewed. So he really didn't know. Like, if I tried to, like, jump in, he would like stop talking like you know so i i, I really just let him uh go i you know i realized like in the first five minutes that if i at least even like because we couldn't see each other it's hard like if you've never been interviewed before for a podcast or whatever and um he just wasn't yeah and and he said that afterwards i think he he just told me like, yeah i'm not used to being interviewed without being like next to the person it just it just didn't work so yeah but yeah, that was great. Yeah, so I just I, I just let him talk. <laughs> and that's what he's good at. Yeah, that was excellent. Another Aussie YouTuber you should catch up with John uh Cadigan. Oh, auto expert. Right. EVs. Today, um yesterday I bought an EV. News. Don't a drum roll. Oh, yeah, no, too late now. Um yeah, I bought an EV. I bought a um, Hyundai um, Ionic Elite, Hyundai Ionic Elite, and um, I've been talking about getting an EV for years, right? I've been looking, I've been test driven a bunch, I've looked at like, I was almost so close to getting a secondhand Leaf, glad I didn't, because um, they're a hold of poor money, and well, they're, they're just piss poor range, it wouldn't have even gotten me up the mountains and back, hopeless. Anyway, yes, I got a brand new 2020 Ionic um, yes, Ionic Elite. I pick it up Wednesday. Pick it up Wednesday. I just got the photos today. They're charging it up as I speak. They're peeling the stickers off it and everything. And the best part about it is I effectively got it for free. I s <laughs> no, Hy Hyundai didn't just give me one. Um, they, um, I, I, I'll do a, probably talk about it on a video, but um, when I pick it up or something. But uh, yeah, basically, yeah, it's an expensive car. <laughs> But um, uh, with uh, the fact that I bought it under my business, my you know I cleared it with my accountant. He said, "Yep, no worries, go for it." And um, and not only can I claim the GST back, 
um, I can. I, I got a great trade in on my uh, old beat up Corolla as well. Um, that yeah. So with the excellent, awesome trade in they gave me, it's a 2014 Corolla. Um, but it's it's got lots of bangs and you know, it's but it's low mileage. It's done anyway. I got so I don't have to worry about selling that. So I got a great trade in on that. So with that claiming back the GST, which is about you know 4,500 bucks or something. Um, five five grand, claiming back that, claiming back the thing, uh, claiming back the capital write-off um, because it's an instant asset write-off uh, up until December when the law changes and I can't write off things anymore. So I can write it off instantly. Um, it means I don't get the money back, but it means it reduces my taxable income and that, based on your yearly income, that actually works out to a quite a significant um, tax saving. And I got some government money um, which is magic fairy money that they just print um, because I'm a, a small business. It's all part of the COVID thing, you know. Helping to inspire business confidence was the uh, was the thing. So I got a couple of payments from that. So when you add in those payments, you add in all the tax breaks. We have no tax breaks for EVs here, none. Uh, but uh, with the COVID tax break, like business tax breaks. So I didn't really get it for free, but that was affectionate. Like the government just basically gave me money to keep my business afloat um, during COVID. And um, so with that, with the, with the trade-in, I effectively traded in a 2014 Corolla for a brand new Hyundai 2020 Ionic. It's, yeah, it's great. Sorry, um, I've missed most of the questions. I haven't been scrolling. Um, I'm, I've got... A BMW i3 teardown coming. Not in real life though, but I've got the teardown documents for it. So I'm going to do a video going through those because it's really interesting. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I need to go. Thank you very much. Yep, I'll go. Um, instant asset write-off. Yeah, it was $10,000 instant asset write-off. And then due to a government, you know, e election promise, they increased it to 20 grand. Then another election promise, they increased it to 30 grand. So that, uh, you know, you can, and by the way, as soon as they introduced the $20,000 instant asset write-off, all of a sudden you could buy a ute for $19,999. <laughs> all these car dealerships <laughs> were, were invoicing utes for $19,999. Oh, but you want wheels with that? Okay, that's an extra thousand, you know, that's an extra <laughs> five grand or something, right? But <laughs> they were invoicing for $19,999. So everyone could write off their yeah, instant asset. And then during COVID, it went up to 50 grand. And then it went up, to, and when, when COVID got a bit serious here, it went up to, like, and you know, companies were shutting down, it went up to 150 grand. So currently it's 150 grand, but come December, end of the year, it ends and it goes back to zero. Freaking idiots are putting it back to zero. Would you believe it? Anyway, so yes, I effectively swapped my uh, 2014 beat up Corolla for a Hyundai Ionic, brand new. So I pick it up on Wednesday. Woot! <laughs> so I didn't really get it for free, but you know, I mean, it's, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. It's um, <laughs> it's great. Uh, no, I don't have to install a car charger. I just a regular PowerPoint. <clears throat> I don't know if Sagan will take over the channel or not, but the lab's his, I guess. Well, it's, I've got two boys. Anyway, got to go. Thank you very much. Um, yep, got to go. Home to the wife and kids. It's already 10 past seven. Yep, should be wondering where I am. See ya. Sorry about the build. Dumbass, forgot to bring the the hangers for the things. Anyway, catch you next time.